You know, I was, I was just thinking about the inspiration for the song. The inspiration for the song was a, a young man named Mephibosheth. Very difficult name to pronounce. But by the circumstances of life, he was made crippled. Although he would have been ultimately being Saul's grandson, King Saul of Israel, he would have been in line for the, the kingship had Saul, his father, not gotten involved with unholy things and really, in many respects, betrayed God and betrayed God's trust for him. Ultimately, through events, through a series of circumstances, Mephibosheth was crippled. His grandpa was no longer king. His daddy was dead. His grandfather was dead. But David, being a man who had the tenderness and the mercy and the grace of the Father, went and had sent for Mephibosheth and had him carry him to his banqueting table. He said, you'll sit here at my table, at the king's table, for the rest of your life. You'll be here in my company. I want to see your face every time I come sit down to eat. I want you to be here in the palace. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ did for you and me. I don't know about you, but I was broken. I was, I was trashed. By the circumstances of life, I was crippled. And not deserving anything, God in his love and his mercy come carried me to the table. I said, okay, all, all you have to do is say, I want to come. And you get to sit at the king's table. Hallelujah. Right now, you can decide in your heart Today, you can decide if you would like to enjoy such an honor and such a privilege for the rest, from starting today, continue on through the rest of your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Today, who will you choose to serve? Who will you choose to sit with? I pray it's Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, I set you free from every bondage, from every stronghold of the enemy, from everything that would try to torment you, oppress you, afflict you. In the name of the living God. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, let me just say, I'm just, I'm absolutely blessed and privileged and happy and thankful that you are here. Um, one of the primary reasons I'm so thankful that you are here is because I know how dear you are to the living God. I know how much you mean to him. I know much how much he loves you, how much he has not only sacrificed to bring you to the knowledge of this wonderful and glorious salvation, but how much he is committed to fighting your every battle. I mean, the scripture says that Jesus always lives to make intercession or to pray for you. Somebody said, I need someone to pray for me. Well, that's good, and, and the Scripture does tell us that we should pray for all men and that we should continue to hold each other up in prayer. But the bottom line of it is Jesus is praying for you. I mean, can you imagine him being that devoted to you, that committed to you? All you need to do to make, I, you have a whole transition in life. All you have to have is a new identity. You are actually healed in the position in life that you're healed in right now because the identity that you have of yourself. And I don't care if you were Bill Gates, that's still an, a, a limited identity if you had as much wealth as you had as much fame as you had, if you had as much of the worldly things and earthly cares provided for you um, as he does. The Lord has offered you and I a privilege and a position to be with him, to step into a place of divine power and authority to represent him. And if there's anything that needs to happen, is God's people need to grab a hold of this authority because there is a lost and dying world and, and, and there are way too many souls. I, I'd appreciate it if you could turn this down for me. Thank you. There are way too many souls that haven't been reached. There's way too much wealth that Satan absolutely controls. And there's way too many nations that are still hid in, held in his prison. And the scripture says to us that if our gospel be hid, it's hid from those whom the God of this world, Satan, who demands to be worshipped, who demands to be served. Somebody said, I'm not serving anybody. Yeah, you are by default. You are under the prince of the power of the air. You listen to me. And I'm going to talk to you about a way to escape his tyrannical rule. 
I'm talking to you about a way to no longer live in the poverty and the affliction and the torment that he would oppress you with, but have an entrance into this wonderful life in God. There's way too many people who sit in churches and they do not reach the lost. They do not have any fruit. They, have no, they, they are not committed to taking the authority that God has given them and going and setting those free who are blinded by the God of this world. You know, Paul took a hold of a heavenly vision. He talked to us about a heavenly vision. And if you would take up the heavenly vision, most all of your problems would go away. Most people live in problems because they want to continue on in their own life. They live in a sense of failure, a sense of defeat. Well, why can't I have it? What does it take for me to break through? What, what's wrong with me kind of mentality? And the reality of it is, is they just simply not been willing to take up their cross and come follow Jesus. They've just simply not been willing to step into this life and do what God said to do. They've not been willing to embrace a heavenly vision. They still hold on to their own. Well, of course, you know, most Christians will say it's a heavenly vision because they've taken their ideas and they've mixed them with God's ideas and then they say it's God's ideas and that they're living the life that the Lord wants them to live. And then when they look around and they don't have the things that God's described in His Word that they should have, but by and large, they say, you know, they, they bring it down to some kind of a complaint. They bring it down to some kind of a doubt and unbelief and uncertainty, a reason to feel um, less than accepted. But I'm telling you here, I'm here to give you some good news. If you step into this wonderful gift that God has given to you and embrace it and take up the identity that he's given you concerning what he's done for us and concerning what he's given to us as a free gift, and you begin to say, I'm going to live out this life and I'm going to walk in a heavenly vision. All these things that God's described that you can have immediately become yours. They've already were yours. You just never realized them because it's the walk of faith. It's the walk of the Lord Jesus Christ that activates them. And as long as your career, I mean, I just read a quote this morning that Theodore Roosevelt said, knowing the Bible, is, uh, knowing the Bible well is far better than any education that anyone could have. And it's not, but it's not just knowing the Bible. It's actually living the Bible. It's one thing just to know all the Scripture, but it's not activated in your life. You've not done it, so you've never really come in to the life. People say, well, that's just religion. Yeah, it's just religion on the surface where people are just knowing about the Word of God and coming and hearing the Word of God and, and, and not doing anything with it. But it's relationship as soon as you begin to interact with the Almighty God and it reciprocated. They were ultimately this presence and encounter with Him has brought to pass in your life the ability for you to talk to him and him to answer back, then that's where everything starts getting good. Well, that's where everything starts getting better. It's already good. It's already good to be born again. It's already good to have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's already good to be born of the Word. It's already good to be born of the Spirit. It's already good to have his accompanying presence. But what happens when you grow up a little bit and then you take the responsibility of having a heavenly vision where Paul said that the Lord had given him the ability to turn people from the darkness to light. The darkness of this world, the darkness that Satan, uh, of his deception that he holds over, the, over all mankind. He's deceived as it were the whole world. We look around, my goodness, it's easy to see how effective he is right now in this earth. I mean, he looks like he's in charge. He looks like he's got more stuff going on than Christ Jesus has, when in reality Christ Jesus has, ultimate, has totally defeated him. Christ Jesus right now has all authority in heaven and earth, but it don't look that way. And the primarily is the reason it doesn't look like that is because too many people have gone ahead and embraced their own earthly vision, run with their own financial program, run with their own interests, and don't know how to get off that merry-go-round, don't know how to jump that uh, cares of life track that they are on. Well, I'm here to talk to you today about being able to do that. I'm here to talk to you today about leaving the realms of doubt and unbelief and stepping into the realms of faith. Leaving the realms, in other words, a synonym of the interest of your own life and starting to pursue a heavenly purpose to follow Jesus Christ. To be in, to have an authority and have an effective place of a witness when you stand before men with power, with the demonstration of the things of, of heaven so that all men might be able to see the goodness and the glory of God. He, God said the heavenly vision went through, as he described it through Paul. He described it as being able to turn people from Satan unto God. 
Somebody looks and says, oh, I want to be able to do that. I felt time and time again. All you need is the fire of the Holy Ghost. All you need is to be baptized in the fire and everything changes. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we in the Pentecostal denominations and, and, and groups, we believe that, that tongues is the first evidence of baptism in the Holy Ghost. But I'm telling you right now, what's happened in these, la in these days is that there's tongues without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> there's tongues without the fiery witness of the Spirit that is supposed to be there. And, and we gotta, we've got to be willing to make the change. I mean, goodness, when you begin to simplify things like, hey, it, without faith it's impossible to please God. And you begin to simplify it like this. If I don't have boldness and confidence, I certainly don't have faith. Uh, it simplifies it because we can make faith somewhat abstract, but you can't make boldness and confidence abstract. You either got it or you don't have it. And then you know whether you have it or you don't have it. When you begin to simplify things, you know, and, and when you understand that the disposition that Father would have you in is to continually be thankful, just begin to thank Him that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, to thank, you for, thank Him for the anointing that He's given you, to thank Him that He's made you a new creation, to thank Him for all of His goodness and mercy, and you live in this place of thanksgiving, then you know, then you know all of a sudden, yeah, really, reality of it is, is I am continually offering praise because praise is, is a synonym with thanksgiving. So many people have lost out on boldness. They've lost out on confidence. They've lost out on thanksgiving. They've lost out on the effective witness of pursuing the heavenly vision and being part of this glorious thing that God has done here in our lives right now by Christ Jesus. I was sitting in a meeting the other day and there was a number of very influential pastors and ministers there in the meeting and one dear brother, he, he uh, you know, he began to tell a story after some people had shared different stories and he said, yeah, I was in a hospital and hospital room and there was a person there dying and death was on them and then they, you know, uh, evidently they had passed away and he said, if I could have just run the doubt and unbelief out of the room, I could have shaken the strongholds of death off that person. And then, of course, I looked around the room just, you know, glancing and many of the influentials were there were kind of, you know, maybe slightly embarrassed or kind of thinking, you know, well, who does this guy think he is? And so I immediately was stirred up by the Holy Ghost, and I said, my goodness, dear brother, listen to me. Until we begin to start pursuing such things with all of our heart, until we determine to have it, there is nobody ever going to move in the faith of it. And the, the beginning of that is boldness and confidence. Now, I want to I, I talk to you about you personally, individually, finding your place, not in uh, ministry, uh, not in your earthly pursuits, because I, I know that a lot of folks are saying, you know, I want to know the will of God for my life, and it really brings it down to kind of like the detailed choices of what they're going to do with their life and, you know, how they should, you know, interact with others and what they should do in the church. But I'm going to really, I want to talk to you about the will of God for your life. I want to talk to you about you finding your place with God. When you can find your place with God, everything changes. All of those details are transparent. They're very clear. You living in a life of Christ that makes everything complete. You're literally asking questions about, well, what am I supposed to do? It's just an indication of your lack of wholeness. It's your lack of, let me say it again. It's an indication of your lack of wholeness. It's your indication of your lack of confidence. It's the indication of your lack of understanding who you are in your position before the Lord. And I want you to walk out of here today knowing who you are, your position before your God before your God, your place in His presence. I want you to understand that you're never going to even begin to find your place in His presence. You're never going to begin to find your purpose until you accept the great love that He has for you. And in that love that He has for you, you're going to have great boldness and you're going to have great confidence and you're going to have great clarity of vision. And, and there's not going to be have anybody, you know, prying you along and shoving you along and trying to get you to do something in the kingdom. A fire will be inside of you. Nobody can stop you from the divine purposes uh, that God has for your life. To find your position, to find your place with the master of relationship where you're standing before him and you, full, you feel fully accepted. 
He has brought you into His presence. He's empowered you and there is now no condemnation. None. It doesn't exist. There is now no sense of guilt or separation. You don't wonder where He's at. You know exactly where He's at. You're not wondering how He feels about you. You know exactly how He feels about you. And all of a sudden, uh, a, a dynamic begins to happen in your life where you are equipped with divine power and authority to stop the one who's constantly slandering you before the presence of the Lord. Who's constantly telling you you're unfit, you're not worthy, you can't do it, and you can't have it, you can't be it. You've got to rely upon yourself because nobody else cares about you. No one else is taking care of you or, going to, or, or concerned for you. You can't step out and believe God for impossible things. If you find your place with God, as Elijah did, you'll understand your partnership with the Lord to execute His government and His will in the earth. To execute His will in such a way. <laughs> that what he's willed, you command. To execute his will in such a way that when you begin to pray, when you wrap your face in the mantle that God has given you, you do not even let up or stop until heaven answers. <laughs> a confidence towards God, an assurance in God. We want every single person in this place. There is enough people right here, right now, in this place who know, who've called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ who, who have received the gift of salvation to absolutely transform this whole nation should you understand your place as Elijah did? Should you understand your authority with God as Daniel did? Should you understand what Father has purposed you to be as the Apostle Paul did? If you could just get a heavenly vision today. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write out your heavenly vision for you so that we'll, won't be, there won't be any... Uh, confusion about it. I'm going to show you the next step you're supposed to walk in so that you won't have any uncertainties whatsoever. The heavenly vision is made plain in Acts 26, 18. It's the same one that God gave to the Apostle Paul. It's the same one that Jesus had. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. There's a lot of people who say the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. But they don't have the results of the Spirit of the Lord. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel to the poor. I tell you, when the Spirit of the living God comes upon you and changes you, you're going to have the same divine compassion that Father has set for the lost in so much that He so loved the world He gave His only begotten Son. It's going to burn in you. You're not going to have to convince yourself. You're not going to have to talk yourself into it. You're not going to have to deal with all the fear and all the slander that Satan's putting on you to stop you because there's a fire much bigger on the inside of you than any opposition that may surround you. We want you to get the fire of God in your life. Hallelujah. We want you to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's, <laughs> he's given me a divine ability. He's given me an anointing. See, not out of my intellect, not out of my mental ascent, not out of my knowledge, but out of a fire burning in me like Jeremiah said, shut up in my bones. It's burning on the inside of me. It's, I mean, when it's shut up in your bones. I mean, when you're aching in your bones, you gotta, you're going to have to get some release. When it's shut up on the inside of you like a fire. And the only way, the only way that you're going to be able to live is to speak it out. When the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, you will have an anointing. You will have a fire shut up in your bones. You'll have a river inside your belly. Hallelujah. It's just the beginnings of a shout and a vocalization, a wisdom and insight to be able to see the yokes of Satan broken off the hearts and minds of people. Today, I believe in the name of Jesus Christ that the doubt and the unbelief I believe in the name of Jesus Christ that everything, that, every trick that Satan has tried to play on you to stop you from moving forward will be broken off of you because you're willing so that you can get up from this place and you can begin to live the life. Are there changes going to have to be made? Uh, oh yeah, there are changes going to have to be made in you just as real as a, a new friend of ours who just gave his life to Jesus the other day. And he's telling me, you know, I, I've been drinking alcohol since I was 16 years old and he's in his 30s and I've been doing, you know, all of these other things and since I was a young man 
and you know, and you know, and he still slips out with a couple of those, you know, uh, selective words. He said, "I've been my vocabulary has been has been so messed up all my life, but it's radically changing. Just be patient with me." But he's given to absolutely given to radical change. And everybody can say, well, praise God, we're happy for that. And you should be, but how about you? How about you be given to radical change because that which is set before you, which Jesus has defined, (laughs) is very different than the life that most of us are living. And to step into it as as a commitment and a dedication to just as much radical change as this dear soul (laughs) <laughs> they just came into the kingdom. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, we just, we we're so excited about what God is doing. You know, we constantly want to be reaching the lost. We constantly want to be seeing people come into the kingdom. And we, we pray in the name of Jesus that you won't be stopped anymore. You won't be hindered anymore. But the only place that you're, what you're going to have to find is you're going to have to find your place before the Lord. Elijah knew who he was in God. Huh? Jesus understood the reason for the anointing. You need to understand the reason for the anointing. The Holy Ghost is upon me, is he? Well, then you're going to preach the gospel to the poor. You're going to have power and authority to bind up the broken in heart. Amen. Not break the heart, but bind up the broken in heart. Amen. To see that, to help them, to help them be delivered from their brokenness in the name of Jesus. And be committed to it today. Say, okay, Lord, that's what I want. You don't have to re- live in regret. You don't have to live in, oh, my goodness, he's talking bad about me again here this morning and making me feel bad. My, you should not feel that way at all. You should be rather, hey, listen, I hear the word of salvation. I hear the call for change. There's change in the atmosphere. There's change. Pat, uh, uh, Schott's line, Pat, Schott, uh, uh, Pat Schott's line, I have a, tr- a little trouble with his name, so you, when I have trouble with the person's name, I've got to say it twice. I'll say it three times. Pat Schott's line, and then I get it. <laughs> uh, he uh, texted me yesterday, and he said, my goodness, he said, look at this. And he sent me some pictures of the meetings that he's having, the youth meetings that he's having. Places are packed out with youth crying out desperately to live the life of Jesus, to be broken free from the bondage and the chain of religions that's religion of, the, of their ancestors. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, if we were in a Hindu nation, we'd be all going over and praise God. But when you realize the, re, the, the repercussions of what's been going on in a Christian nation, you'd be also saying, praise God. To see, God's raising up a radical group of people, and you don't want to be left in their dust as they begin to run like the horses. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't want to be left in the dust sitting back there with a bunch of Bible knowledge and not doing anything with it. Huh? No, 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 no. Come on now. No, and the only, well, I'm telling you, those of you who have given yourself to understanding the Word of God, praise God for you. Now get baptized in the fire so the Word of God can work through you. Let me say that again. Now get baptized in the fire so the Word of God can work through you because he's anointed me to, to unlock the prison doors, <laughs> to break off the, every yoke, to open up the prison doors to them that are bound, and to proclaim, to proclaim liberty to those who are captives of Satan's deception and darkness. But let me tell you, then you, even as all of those youth crying out to God for, about, for the Lord to baptize them in the fire, his fire desperately screaming, oh, sovereign God, come take your power and reign. You're going to have to do that same thing too. Don't let, don't let your love grow cold. Cold love, indifference, will cause you to have far less than boldness and confidence and divine assurance. I want to read a verse of scripture to you that's shocking. It's found in Luke chapter 4 and verse 6. And I, you know, all my life I, I've looked at this verse of scripture and I've heard so many theological stuff and people sit around and, you know, with their bow ties on, they're all fancy hairdos and their degrees arguing about what this mean, means. Everybody giving their opinion and very few people, if any, doing anything about it. Are you listening to me? Huh? Very few people looking at what's really going on and then uh, recognizing what God has in- instructed us to go do with the authority that he's given us to do it in. Here, in this verse of Scripture, in Luke chapter 4 and verse 6, the devil comes to Jesus. This is Satan, known as Lucifer, 
also known as the shining one, okay? And also known as the morning star. Pretty radical. Those are the names that he has. A mighty prince with God, one who stood in Father's presence, no one who knows everything about the anointing, one who many theologians would classify as the worship leader of heaven. Ultimately, he wanted more for himself, and the lie began in him when he decided that he wanted to be gone, that he could do it better than God did it. He was the first Judas. He was the first Absalom. Oh, that I could be king. I should be king. I would rule better than my dad. All of those things that you see in evil people was born in the heart of the satanic realm, in the heart of this one named Lucifer, this one we call Satan or the devil, which, you know, these are, just na these are names that describe who he is and what he does. He's a slanderer and he's an accuser. That's what Satan and devil means. What is your name in the spirit? What is it that you do? What is your name in the spirit? Huh? Does anyone in the spiritual realm know you? I guarantee you when you walk with God and know God, you're going to be announced in heaven and earth and everybody's going to understand who you are. It's just like when the... When the the ones who had taken up the name of Paul and Jesus to go cast the devil out of a man possessed of the devil said to the de demon spirits and with the name of Jesus and with the name of Paul, we command you to go out in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. The devil replies, Jesus we know. Paul we know, but who are you? They want to cast out devils and they're not known. Why? They've not found their position. They've not found their place in relationship. They've not found their walk with God. They've not found their authority. Faith is not a living part of their life because they've, they're not willing to risk their life and lay it all down so that Jesus Christ could live. They held on to a part of their life and today... We earnestly pleading with you, let go of your life. You do not have long to live. You do not have long to sojourn here. Understand there are more valuable things than you placed upon your existence. There's more valuable things than houses and land. There's more valuable things than food and clothing. There's more valuable things than your own reputation and your own ideas of yourself. Oh, but to lay all of that aside as a beggar's garment and to begin to take up the life of Jesus Christ and run with those things that he, he showed us with all plainness and clarity, nobody can mistake the life and ministry of Jesus. Out of the world is waiting to see it. He's a light that lights up every man that comes into the world and there is a great need for the light of God to shine in this darkness right now. Hey, listen, yes, darkness is upon the people, gross darkness is over them, but a great light is about to shine. It's about to shine. Why? Because there's people getting mobilized. There's people getting earnest. There's people getting desperate. There's people getting needy. There's people who are going to give no rest to God till they bust through. It doesn't matter what it costs them. Hallelujah. That's what's happened to every person that's ever led a revival or move of God. At any time, anybody who's been willing to be a vessel from which God's glory should flow through them, they became so desperate for God that they cut off the food and they cut off whatever else they needed to cut off so that they could begin to find their place and position with the Lord. There are many people around here, my goodness, the doctrine, the gospel that you understand and that you know is good doctrine. It's enough to give you such identity and such security and such boldness that you should stand fully in the ministry of Jesus. But the Word God be baptized in the Holy Ghost. You have to give your life over to the Holy Spirit for the Word of God to take on expression, for the Word of God to be made manifest. You can know all you want to know. People, are, people once again, mental ascent, knowledge, what I know. What you know, I'm going to do nothing for you. Unless it works within you. It's got to be mixed with faith. It works within you. That faith, that outworking. Huh? That out, the gospel was preached to, Paul said the gospel was, pre, gospel was preached to Israel. Didn't profit them. They saw the power of God. They, you know, they were in the company of those who were the famed, 
folks in whom God's presence dwelt and in their midst. They could say, hey, Moses is our leader all they want to all day long. They can talk, be proud of their church all day long. Their specific denomination all day long. Didn't mean nothing, didn't, you know, didn't result in anything really in their life because the word was not mixed with faith in them that heard it. It was mixed with faith in Moses. It was mixed with faith in Joshua. It was mixed with faith in Caleb. Thus you see an outworking and everybody rejoices in the outworking and the fruits of their life. Praise God for somebody who's willing to step out and believe it radically and absolutely just get out in a total abandonment and go do it. Fear will restrain you. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you what fear is. It is a place where Satan demands you to fall at his feet and worship. I'm going to say it again. It is a place where Satan demands you to fall at his feet and worship him. That's what fear is. There is a love, a realm of love, which Father is. They that dwell in love dwell in God, for God is love. That cast out all fear. I mean, it literally, it cast it out. Just like God has given us power to cast out devils. It cast it out. It demands the darkness to leave when the light begins to shine. I was telling somebody the other day, you know, having a problem believing God, you know, for, to just walk out a, a, a daily walk with God. And, and I said, hold up here now. First of all, I said, I set you free right now in the name of Jesus because I don't know what happened to them before I got to them. By the time I get to them, my goodness, I'll make sure that they liberated because I'm not coming as a scribe and a Pharisee to just quote verses of Scripture. I come with divine power and authority to execute God's will uh, over all those things that Satan would try to do to oppose God's will. So I, I demanded him to be set free. I command every devil to leave out of his life. And then I simply said, look, you were standing in the day. I said, you now, right now, you live in the realm of the day and it's a 24-hour day period you live in the realm of light you don't have to worry about all that darkness you're no longer of the night anymore <laughs> Hallelujah. you're a child of the light now my if we can just get God's people broken free from the religious activity and the ritual that demands them to bow to some degree it's Satan's music Satan wants to be worshiped we will ultimately see him controlling the entire economic system. And by the middle of the tribulation, in John, uh, forgive me, Revelation chapter 13, I believe it's verse 17, you will not be able to buy or sell unless you have bowed before him and received his name. Taken, and, and that, you know what, that they, in, in ancient times, if you were a slave of someone, they branded you. Huh? Now we do that brand cattle. Huh, and brand uh, horses. But back in those days, you branded. And this is what's really being said. Satan wants to brand every human being. One day he's going to be able to do it at another level. Restraints that are now upon him, divine restraints that are now upon him will be removed from all of him. We can look back through time and we can see. We can look at Nebuchadnezzar and we can see Satan's des desire to be worshipped. He's been desiring to be worshipped since the very beginning, I mean, his deception, his craft so great, he led, he led an, a, a, a number of angels that go beyond being able to even calculate or number. He led them away in rebellion against God. What kind of effect can he have on you? Says somebody said, well, he, they, Satan was able to lead them away because they didn't have the divine nature. Oh, yeah? Well, what kind of nature did they have then? I'll tell you, they had the divine nature. They had an innocent divine nature as much as anyone else. Satan's craft of deception is great. Look at what he did to Eve. Look at what he did to Eve and how he deceived her because she sat and listened to just a couple of sentences that he had to speak. And because she was willing to entertain just a couple of sentences, she came under the yoke of his deception. I know Christians that have listened to whole books Satan has written. Not just a couple of sentences. How many of God's people listen to the entire paragraphs on a daily basis of Satan's propaganda and lie and fear and intimidation and accusation and condemnation against the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ and who God's made you. I want you to decide today that you're going to find your place before God. You're going to come sit at the table. You're going to belong to him and you're going to start executing his will by commanding you know, those things which he said to be done in the earth, by surrendering your life to go follow Jesus. Hallelujah.
I'm bold to see Kitala. Ha ha ha. Oh ha. Hallelujah. Ah, my, 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 my. I pray in Jesus' name you get this. Luke chapter 4 and verse 7, 6. And the devil said unto him, All of the authority. If I remember back up to verse 5, he says, He takes him up into a high mountain to show him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. There are such places. Not visible to the eye, but there are such places. He showed him all the kingdoms of the world one time. And he says to him, this is what Satan believes. All this authority will I give to you and the splendor of them. For it has been delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. We can look over real quickly with me in Ephesians chapter 2 and in verse 2 and we can see uh, that our position at one time was under the authority that he now has because in Ephesians 2, 2 it says, In times past we walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. John said the whole world lies in wickedness. There is a realm of darkness that nobody has to have too many uh, proofs given to them before they can be fully persuaded that there's something seriously evil going on. And then on the other side of things, Jesus said, uh, Satan is cast out. Now as the prince of this world judge, he has given us authority over all the powers of darkness to cast them out, to tread upon scorpions and serpents over all the power of the enemy. He's given us all strength and power and might in his name to be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might to be able to deal a fatal blow to Satan wherever we find him. He said, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. Go now. But Satan's got, the, Satan's got far more on his side. And he always believes it. He has control over far too many souls. He has control over the economic system. He has control right now over far too many nations. So do we have ourselves a contradiction? Or do we have a bunch of people who's not been willing to obey God and do what God said to do? Do we have a bunch of folks who believe that they have this wonderful walk with God but have never really stepped into anything beyond babyhood? Huh? Isn't it good to be a baby? I say it's good to be a baby. Praise God. I write unto you little children for your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I say that's wonderful. I go ahead and rejoice in that. I'm not going to feel too bad about being a baby. No one wants to be called a baby. Even the babies don't want to be called a baby. My name's not baby. And you get scolded by a three-year-old quickly for calling them baby. Are you with me? Because you're already taking offense to being a baby. I'm happy to be a baby. I'm, 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 there's always going to be a dimension of me as a baby, you know. But I mean, how about being a young man where you ultimately have begun to walk with God in such a way? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> that you have been able to defeat Satan at every point where he's demanding that you bow down and worship him. See, when we look in Daniel, we can see what God's purpose was. God's purpose was to bring Christ Jesus forward as the one who rules all nations with all power and authority. We saw that Jesus ultimately stepped into that place when he ascended up on high and led captivity captive. That God has highly exalted him above every name. That Jesus now is seated above all principality and power and might and dominion. That he has absolute authority over all things. That is, an, that is unquestionable. Satan was just trying to give him another alternative. Satan was trying to ultimately impose upon him an, an eternal affliction and torment. Somebody said, well, was it even possible for that to work? Well, it wouldn't have been being tempted in all ways as we are tempted if it wasn't possible for it to work. Today, we're talking to you about you finding your place with God no longer bowing before Satan. You know, as soon as 
somebody begins to get an anointing. As soon as somebody begins to flow and operate in that realm of divine glory, Satan comes out against it with great ferociousness. He don't want you to have it. He says you can't have it. It's authority over him. It will destroy him. It will defeat him at every place where he has tried to impose his rule on souls and territory and things. And so immediately, see, Jesus was anointed. In a special way, he just was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he was baptized, submitting himself to the ministry that God had raised up before him, Okay, you know, today it was really on my heart to just, you know, tweet this, this message that God has raised up many great leaders today. And to do anything but give them honor is wrong. And you might ask, well, who is the leader? Anyone doing more than you are? Smiley face. <laughs> All right. Huh? Anybody who's doing more than you are, that's the leader. Are you with me, dear people? Do you understand? But Jesus went to submit himself to the leadership that was already set in place by God before him. And my goodness, dear people, come on now. You're going to be isolated, dude, on your own, think that you can have it your own way? Huh? He wasn't up there telling John how he was equal and how he was a co-laborer. How was he? Did you hear him say, I want to hear my co-laborer, you know, with you, know. My goodness gracious. And we get a lot of that nonsense. There's a lot of breaches, spiritual breaches that go on in the context of of God's household because they live more in fear than they do in love. They live more in self-exaltation than they live in the realm of humility and submission because there's more of an identity of the satanic realm working in their life than the identity of Christ. People, let's get rid of the mind of Satan. Let's step over here into the mind of Christ. Let's define ourselves not as Satan and the world will define us, but let's define ourselves with that which God has empowered us with. Go now with all authority. Well, as soon as he submitted himself to the ministry of John and fully came under the full dimensions of his ministry, which was to baptize in water for the remission of sins, huh? for repentance, for sins to be dealt with through washing, of, through, through, through baptism. And Jesus didn't have any sins to wash away, but he still sent, submitted himself to the ministry. Huh? Isn't that amazing? He was numbered with the transgressors every way in which we have had to basically uh, stand in a position before the Lord. He stood there with us. Isn't that amazing? He's amazing. And then the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, the heavens were open, the Holy Ghost came upon him. And as soon as that anointing, uh, that baptismal anointing to go and destroy every power of Satan came upon him, he went up into the wilderness because there Satan was going to come at him, come in against, out him, against him, demand you to fall down and worship. I watch it happen to people all the time. For Jesus to fail, it would have been the end of our salvation. None of us would have come to the knowledge of salvation. None of us would have been saved. For us to do it, we get to come back and get another chance and another chance and another try and another try and another forgiveness and another forgiveness until we get it right. God's devoted us to us getting it right. But I want you to also think about how many people won't come into the kingdom because you're never willing to get it right, perhaps. I'm willing to get it right. Are you willing to get it right? If you're not willing to get it right, then your repentance isn't real. I say, I'm willing to get it right. Are you willing to get it right? Okay, I'm going to say it again because I didn't get a response from everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and take everybody who says nothing as the ones that need to come respond to the altar call. I want to get it right. Do you want to get it right? Yes. That's good because if you don't want to get it right, then your heart's not right with God. Father's going to have mercy and grace for everybody who wants to get it right. But you can't say, I want to get it right and not do anything. There's a consecration in doing what God said to do. There's a getting up and going. It's like Reinhardt said, God can do anything, but there's only one thing God can't do, get you off your couch. And you have a couch in many different areas of your life where you're not willing to go, where you're not willing to believe God for it, where you're not willing to do it. What kind of heavenly vision do you have? Let me tell you what kind of heavenly vision I have. I want to conquer the whole known world. I want to look, one little demon came upon a man named Alexander the Great and he had the inspiration to conquer the whole known world. And you're going to tell me that a man of God shouldn't have an anointing to want to go and conquer the whole known world? Where's your passion, you know? Where's your heart? Where's your inspiration? 
It's like I heard a brother say the other day, one woman full of the devil was able to remove uh, prayer from school and a whole army of Christians can't get it back in? Something seriously wrong. Something's really amiss. One brother said to me, he said, you think we've missed some details? I said, my dear brother, we've missed whole chapters. We've missed whole chapters. Obviously, we've missed whole chapters because you aren't doing it and I'm not doing it. And we up in front of the pack. Come on now. Hallelujah. But we're going to do it. And we're going to do it. Because we, 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 we faithful and, and purposefully putting the press to the thing, man. We're not going to stop by all of his intimidations. Right. Satan so wants to be worshipped, you can see it in Nimrod as he tried to get the nations to worship him. Hmm. Satan so wants to be worshipped, you can see it then expressed in Nebuchadnezzar as he makes an image and commands all the world to bow down before him. It was about three guys who weren't willing Hallelujah. And through their life, the power of God was manifested and a nation was changed. I don't know where Daniel was. I think he was out, you know, doing something else that day. He may have been, you know, in another country taking care of some of the things of state. Huh? But there was three men standing there who said, yeah, I don't care what you say. Whether God delivers us or not, we're not we, you know, we serve God alone. We're not going to bow to the will of Satan. We're not going to bow to the will of of the kingdoms of this world. I hope that today I can define for you where you bow to Satan, where Satan comes and intimidates you and you stop. I hope I can define for you today how the Satan continually would snare you and imprison you through all of his trickery, through all of his deceits, through all of his lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Fear is something that comes out of the actually out of the realm of the pride of life. Humility is the foundation for all the fruits of righteousness that are expressed in your life. Even as pride is the foundation for every form of iniquity to be, be, to be revealed. But praise God for the new heart. Amen? Amen? I mean, we can talk about these various different things, but it's so important that we all understand that where the place of beginnings is having a place of boldness and confidence to stand before Him. To, to recognize you can feel unworthy, you can feel that you don't have any right, but the bottom line of it is that the Lord has come and He's carried you to the table. He's brought you into a place where you're seated with Him in Christ Jesus. You never need to feel anything but empowerment ever again. Now dream. Dream big. Dream a big heavenly vision. Dream a big one and go and do it. Go now. Do it. Take off. I'll help you raise money. I've preached to you enough about faith that you should be able to see money literally multiplied. But if you don't, come on, man. I'm telling you, I, I really grabbed a hold of this thing in faith just the other day. You know, forget about just letting faith just exist in the realm of people giving more and believing God for more. Okay? I'm going to continue to do that, but don't just put it all in that one dimension where you're waiting for people a God of faith to step into a greater financial means so that they can give more. Okay? I'm going to continue to do that, but I'm not going to just have that as my one focus because it's been my one focus for a long time. See, people step into a greater realm of faith. Are you listening to me? So that they can give more. Hallelujah. So, so that they're more of who they are is represented on the mission field and doing the work of the kingdom. They're supporting it. I'm going to... Just go ahead and start moving in faith to actually see the money sitting there multiplied. To see it go from $10 to $10,000. Just right there, multiplied. Brrr. Hey, if the, you know what? If the, if the Federal Reserve can print money, why can't I? Why can't I multiply money? I mean, I mean, I can't. We, we all understand why I can't print it, okay? But why? I can multiply it in the name of Jesus Christ because ain't nobody is going to look exactly the same. It's going to be the same. Yes, sir. It'll be it. So I said, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. I can do that because I can do anything. I can do anything. 
anything that I'm willing to believe God for when it comes to the issues of advancing the kingdom of God. And I'm tired of standing back watching about everybody, you know, complaining about this economic issue and this world government issue and this whatever financial. Look, Satan is the one behind the scenes and you and I have been given all authority in Jesus' name. Now let's rise up and do something about this program. Now let's just rise up and do something. Quit writing books. Start doing something. I'm going to write a book. My goodness, why? <laughs> I told you the other day, he's going to write a book. I said, wait till you do it. After it's done, write the book. Amen. Amen. Just because you've got an idea, now you've got to write a book because you've got an idea. Oh, this is what we all need to do. Yeah, this is what we all need to do, all right. But you need to go do it first. Somebody's going to have to do this. And so I'm just telling you, I'm letting you know, I'm kind of broadcasting right now both seed and broadcasting vision and brought, letting you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to step it up. I'm going to step it up. Would you please come step it up? Would you come step it up with me? Would you quit occupying your life consumed with your own cares? We're calling. God is calling. Jesus is calling you. Somebody says, what do I do? Find your place on your knees first. That's what you do. Yeah, God wants you to go. Jesus said, go. Matthew 28, 18, I give you all authority, go. He said, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. Now go. But first, get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Get baptized in the Holy Ghost. You'll know who you are in God. Hallelujah. You'll be carrying something. You'll have an authority. Praise God. And I pray it doesn't take you more than 10 days to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Huh? President says 10 days at max. Okay? And that was... And that really is before the Holy Ghost came. It took 10 days for the transition. Holy Ghost is here, so you ought to be able to get baptized in the Holy Ghost in fire before this message is over. Cornelius' house did. They got the, 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 the gap between them giving their life to Jesus and being baptized in the Holy Ghost was no gap at all. In fact, we don't know whether they gave their life to Jesus and said the sinner's prayer first or whether they were baptized in the Holy Ghost first. In fact, it happens equally at the same time. Here, listen, who shot up off with the cocoa pie? The glory is here. Why? The Holy Ghost is witnessing his truth. Hallelujah. He's witnessing the truth that is in Christ Jesus. The mighty presence of Jesus Christ is here right now. Enough to make you feel happy the rest of your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Make you off Okaya. Enough to give you such faith and boldness you can go everywhere subduing. Hallelujah. And not being subdued anymore. Hallelujah. Somebody says, well, does Satan have, are all the kingdoms of this earth his? And the splendor of it? And was it given to him? And if it was, who gave it to him? Well, I say Adam gave it to him. Because Adam was given the authority and Adam abdicated and Satan was the one he abdicated to. He surrendered over his authority. Does Satan have all authority? Does he have that kind of sovereignty? Obviously, he's getting a bigger job done than anybody else right now. Obviously. He has the majority. Obviously, in the days of Job, he went throughout the earth walking up and down, going to and fro, checking everything out. And the, and, the, and the overtone was everybody was following him and serving him. And God was able to say, as you consider, consider my one perfect servant, Job, who is righteous in all of his ways, who is upright before me, who, 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 who excuse, who, de, who despises evil. Ha, ha. In other words, who despises you. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, the Spirit of the Lord is on me inside of me, and I despise evil. I despise Satan. Hallelujah. I am the set. Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of Satan. Jesus is manifested in my life and in your life and anybody's life who would believe to destroy the works of Satan. That's why he said these signs, these miracles, this power... 
will follow them that believe. In my name they are cast out devils. That's to destroy the work of Satan. To, to speak with new tongues. There's some unique things going on there in the prayer life and the intercession life. Hallelujah. Praise God. And to being able to turn, just to speak in, 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 in the terminology that belongs to heaven. The words that belong to heaven. To be given the tongue of the learned. Insight and wisdom. Huh. To have power over nature. To command the wind and the waves. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you drink any deadly thing, it should not hurt you. Uh, take up serpents. The poison of the adder. The, 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 the mouth of the lion. Stop. The poison of the adder. Not able uh, to, to affect you in any way. You shake it off in the fire as the apostle Paul did. And suffer no harm of the most poisonous viper. Instead of running to the hospital. Ah! Fear! Fear! That's torment. Bow before me. God's word will not keep you. It's all mine. To whom I will, I give it. <laughs> She's had one word to say. Huh? We'll worship God alone. Him alone will we serve. I want you to get that in your vocabulary. Hallelujah. We worship God alone. Him alone will serve. We're not going to bow to all your lies. We're not going to bow to your intimidation. We're not going to bow to your fear. We're not going to bow to your iniquity. We're not going to bow to your bondage of religion. Religion, a knowledge of God without any demonstration of power to prove it. Religion, a knowledge of God without any demonstration of power to prove it. The gospel is not the gospel lets us present it with the Holy Ghost and power proved by Jesus and by everyone who followed him and ministered in the New Testament that you're reading, for everyone who's listening to me. There's too many things we value, too many ideas that, are, that people are pursuing to reach the lost that are not in the Scripture. They're not in the Bible. You listening to me? I'm talking to you today about seeing everybody that's sitting around you right now delivered from the blind, mind blinding spirits of hell. I'm talking to you about seeing everybody that is delivered, that is around you, where you go to your workplace, your play place, delivered from the mind blinding powers of darkness. Satan, as soon as he sees you have an anointing and an authority to do that, as soon as he sees you are able to flow and the anointing at all, he's going to come out against you to stop you in one way or the other, either through sin and iniquity or through religion and doubt and unbelief. Father's here to fortify you. You need to decide whose side you're on. Somebody said, I'm not on anyone's side. I'm living for myself. Such a thing doesn't exist. That's naive. If you lived for yourself, if you lived for yourself and gave yourself everything that you really want, you would not have one moment of sadness or sorrow. Are you listening to me? You would be happy, happy, happy. You would be blessed, blessed, blessed. Everything would be going good, good, good. Those things are imposed upon you. So hello, you're not in charge. Because if you were in charge, you wouldn't be feeling so bad and having such a rough life of it. Hello. Pray for me, Pastor. Pray for me. Pray. Cry out to God. Who's about the name? Oh, baby. He's all right. Father, we thank you for the anointing right now. Touch little guy. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Sikoda Masa. Minangale. Mangasaya. I will not be comforted. Jesus. Lord Jesus. Ah, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, oh, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that old fever gets off of you right now. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Babies could be crying. We'll take care of that. You hold them, I'm pray, okay? 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's all right. Don't be, don't be embarrassed. We're having a prayer meeting. You lay your hand on him. I lay my hand on him. We preach for results. And if all, we get, if all we get is a baby crying, my goodness, then we got something to do. <laughs> Bring comfort to baby. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Urasara kiyalai. Yiko shalamakaya. Ur mama na mekete. Go find mama. Ibra shabba yolo monsete. Ikso yama. Ikso yama. Ikso yama. Iksu Yamadate. Iksu Yamadapasia. Thank you, Lord. Deliverance from sickness and pain from teething and everything else. What do you need? What would you like to have? What would you like to have? Would you like to have a walk with God to where that you're kept by the power of God and Satan can't touch you? How many of you would like to have such a walk with God you never sin again? Such a walk of God is available. But unfortunately, there's a lot of people who really like sin. They enjoy it. Satan didn't make, Satan didn't make you do it. You're drawn away of your own lust. You're enticed. You decide to go do it. How many of you would like to have a walk with God where you walk around in boldness? Right. Well, we can, all, we can see how boldness comes. They pray, oh God, stretch forth your hand and grant us boldness. Grant us boldness. Stretch forth your hand and do signs and signs and wonders by your holy child Jesus. Behold their threatenings. Behold the incisions of hell. Behold the lies of Satan. They say we can't talk about Jesus here. They say that we can't, we can't tell people on the job about his goodness. We can't speak of him in, in school. One woman came into the school system, started speaking against him and shut him down. What if one person full of the Holy Ghost goes in and starts speaking for him and, and, and brings life and restoration back in because he, she throws down or he throws down the strongholds of Satan. God's given us authority. He's given us authority. And suddenly they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Huh? Suddenly... They were filled with boldness, huh? Suddenly, the, the place was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Once again, to speak the word boldly. Right now, you can decide if you're willing to stop bowing to the lies of Satan and living under his oppressive rule where he's demanding you to have the attitudes and the disposition and, and the thoughts and the actions and say, no longer will I bow to you and listen to your lives anymore. But from this day forward, I live by the rule of the Word of God and by the rule of the Spirit. Father, I'm yours and I'm going to serve you. I'm going to follow you and do what you want me to do. Suddenly, you're going to step in to a place of the good things of God and that ability to do it is available at this moment. You don't have to wait till tonight. You don't have to wait till next week. You don't have to wait till next year. That's all a lie. Next year will never come for those who are putting it off till next year. Now... Right now, this is the acceptable time. Right now is the moment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Show that as exactly what you do, rather than giving baby crackers and juice and other things to satisfy the physical need, you do it by the Spirit. So many people's lives, even after they've come to know the Lord, all they have done all of their life is take care of their body. It's all they've done. Feed themselves. Take care of their body. Make everything good. Get themselves all dressed up. Make themselves look as good as they possibly can make themselves look. It's all about driven for your appearance and the satisfaction of your own physical need. And their spirituality is absolutely non-existent. Somebody said, I'm just so weak. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what we're going to do is we're going to take water away from you for three days and we're going to see how weak you are. Mm -hmm. You're going to probably be dead. And you go, you're not taking my water from me. Yeah, because you care about your physical life. But how about the spiritual drink of prayer? How about the spiritual drink 
of being filled with the Spirit because you speak to the rock and the rock gives you water. That's, that's a reciprocation. People go for days. People go for weeks without drink, spiritual drink. They have no concept of their, who, the reality of who they really truly are. The spiritual life is almost non-existent. How about if we take food away from you and say you can't eat? You're going to be weak. You're going to be, you're going to be just not able to do the, the things that you're responsible to do on a daily basis in this earthly life, in this natural existence. Yet people go days and maybe even go months without a diet of the Word of God, to live by the Word of God. You're not going to live by the Word of God if you're not constantly being fed the things of the Spirit by the Word. God's Word of Spirit and life is far more than stories told. It's that which we live by. And what it's going to do is it's going to put, it's going to put a vision before you. I mean, my goodness gracious, if you just read the Word just for whatever, entertainment, I'm not going to do anything for you. That's the balance of it. You read the Word of God and you devote yourself to doing it. What God said to do, you rise up and go and do it. Huh? Jesus said in his parable, considering two sons serving the Father, one son, he said to them, will you go into the field and work? And the son said, no. But afterwards repented and went into the field. To the other son, he said, will you go into the field and work? And he said, yes, but did not go. Which son did his will? Huh? And he's making a point. You can't go reading the Bible and saying you're doing all the stuff, and then you never go and do what the Word of God says to go and do. We can't just take the Word of God and make it all about our own salvation, all about our own life, just what's going to be good for us, you know, just our few and our family. The Word of God is bigger than that. In fact, the Lord takes really good care of you when you're taking care of those that are around you. He takes good care of you when you go start ministering to a lost and dying world, when you go start casting out devils. I went to some folks the other day, and, you know, they were ministering to a person. I said, you just sound like a scribe to me. You just sound like a scribe. Where, what church are you from? Of course, I knew good and well because I knew them. I said, you don't, you, don't, you don't express any authority over demon spirits to bind Satan and command him to leave. You're not preaching the gospel. All you're doing is reciting scriptures. It's all mental ascent. It's not by the Spirit. It's just a scribe and Pharisee approach to reaching the lost. Forget about it. That's not how the Lord sent us. He sent us with divine authority. Go cast out devils. To look at a person and say, in the name of Jesus Christ right now, the torments of hell will mess with you no more. I set you free. I give you a new heart, says the Lord. And I give you a new spirit right now. And I put my Holy Ghost on the inside of you. Receive right now. I tell you in Jesus' name, everything will be different. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I've been anointed. I'm setting you free from your prison. What happens when you start doing that? As soon as you find a willing person, instead of just doing whatever, the religious thing, man, of the mental ascent, it's got to stop their people. We're just ministering to you here. Today we want to stir you up with hunger. I was so blessed uh, hearing about everybody that's been coming to prayer. I was so blessed with the people that were here at prayer last night. My goodness gracious, dear people, that is where every move of God is birthed, first in the heart of the individual, and secondly, in the whole community of humanity. <laughs> I had a theologian comment on my face page today. It said, when I was dealing with some of these issues, he said, yes, Satan's pseudo-sovereignty is only in the hearts of men and the societies of men. You say whatever you want, just get up and start setting somebody free. Okay, just so, so give me whatever explanation you want. Let's just see you subdue the financial realm. Let's see you subdue the kingdoms. He's got too many nations. Don't tell me about how he just told a lie. Because he's, he, he's a liar and he believes his own lie. The issue is apparent to us. The issue is apparent to us. He has too many na nations in his prison. Too many souls under his power. And the financial dimension of things, compare how many finances are at work in his kingdom versus how many finances are in the, at work in the realms of the church. 
You can sit there and say, well, it isn't my job if you want, but I'm, I'm not going to be that way. I'm not that way. You're, gonna be a, you're hanging around the wrong person. You're going to be sad and unhappy hanging around me. Why? Huh? Because when you go running with somebody and all you can do is crawl, you feel pretty bad about yourself. Are you with me? Hello. Huh? And they lapping you again? Well, man, you haven't stopped crawling yet? You don't feel bad about yourself. You don't feel bad about yourself being around here, I'm telling you right now, unless you're willing to get a heavenly vision, unless you're willing to go conquer and subdue. Just begin to believe it now. Quit living the poor me syndrome. Quit, quit living under the poverty and the affliction of the enemy. Quit trying to do it your own way. Stop it now. Rise up from the place that you're in. Those of you who are being afflicted and tormented by the power of the darkness, sit you free now in Jesus. Those of you who live in a life of condemnation, I set you free. Don't you bow ever again to Satan's life. Don't you allow him to impose anything upon you ever again, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Habasutea. Just lift your hands towards heaven right where you're sitting. Thank you, mighty God. Sikota Masatea. Membera Sirupo. Birisapaya Lakataya. Father, I thank you for your wonderful grace that's taken a hold of Danny's life. Danny, when did you give your life to Jesus? Huh? You have it? Are you, are you? Well, Danny, today I set you free. Listen to me. In the name of Jesus, the torment and the affliction that has controlled your life, the drugs, all the rest of the mess, all the stuff that goes down, in your generation. I break that power off you. That satanic control, you're not going to be a part of his kingdom anymore. All you have to do, Daniel, all you have to do is be willing not to be a part of his kingdom anymore. And I believe you're willing. And so now in the name of Jesus, I set you free. I give you a new heart. I give you a new spirit, says the Lord. And I put my spirit in you. From this day forward, you no longer live in the realms of darkness. You no longer live in that oppression, that torment of mind and spirit. You're no longer going to be broken and crippled anymore. He carries you to the table right now, Danny. Everything changes. Everything about your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Satan! You no longer have a right or claim over Danny's life. I take and place the blood of Jesus Christ upon you, Danny. This day forward, you are a citizen of heaven. You belong to the King of Kings. And I command you in Jesus' name, receive the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Spirit. Where there was brokenness, let there be wholeness. In the name of Jesus, where there's torment, let there be joy in Jesus' name by the power of the living God. I, I speak restoration to your family, restoration to the relationships that have been broken, to the torment and the fear and the fight and the anger and the hate. Broken now in Jesus' name. Broken now in Jesus' name. Total restoration in Jesus' mighty name. La mangada yeshe. Ha 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 ha. La sakayato. Na sateo. Never the same in Jesus' name. Never the same. Ha 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 ha. Never the same in Jesus' name. La rasada de kupoyo. Ha ha. Marabaya residi atush tarate. Malangade. Farahushadaya. Father, I thank you for the anointing upon Danny's life to go everywhere, preach the gospel, to see so many people in prison that is the same prison that he once was in. Set free by your power, by your divine purpose. Lizard and I. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Russia. Oh, Romana. Oh, Romana. Oh, Romana. Oh, I want you to lift your hands towards heaven right now. I want you to just let God, uh, the Holy Spirit, come strengthen you, fill you, empower you, encourage you. 
I want you to be certain today, right now, at this moment in time, I want you to be certain about who God made you to be. I want you to find your place in Jesus Christ right now. I want you to find your place in Jesus Christ right now. So that you'll stand before God from this day forward in the place of authority that He purchased for you to have. That you'll no longer be like a scribe and a Pharisee. You'll no longer live your life as a mere man in humanity. But from this day forward, you begin to live the life of the Spirit. The state forward, you begin to become a citizen of heaven. You're not going to wait to reign in the millennial reign of Christ. You're going to start reigning right now. You're not going to wait to execute his will someday in the future. You're going to begin to have an authority to execute his will right now. You're going to receive the fire. I said fire of the Holy Ghost. Receive the fire of the Holy Ghost right now. I said receive the fire. Of the, I said receive the divine presence and outpouring of God upon your life right now. Just receive. It is as simple as receiving Jesus Christ. Of saying, Lord, I receive. Father, I want this. I mean, that moment of time where you wanted to be a new creation, where you wanted a life change, God came in. All you've got to do is want the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost. And He'll fill you. It's that simple. Don't make it complicated. It's not. It is that simple. Don't make it complicated for it's not. Hallelujah. 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 You just begin to open your mouth. Satan will try to get you to bow before him and say, Oh, you can't tell this person that. Oh, you can't speak that way. Oh, you can't come as a representative of heaven. You got to talk about the weather. You got to talk about sports events. Who's going to win the cup? Tell you about who won the cup. Jesus. He's the champion of your soul. He won the greatest battle. He won the greatest fight. He won the greatest event of all times. It's all about you. Thank you, Jesus. From this day forward, in the name of Jesus Christ, I commission you by the authority of the living God to go everywhere and preach the gospel in such a way that you represent Christ Jesus, who has all authority in heaven and earth to do away with every oppressive lying thing, every power of darkness, everything that would try to defame him. In the name of Jesus, those of you who have a continual reoccurring sin, reoccurring snare, I break the power of it off of you. So that no more you be held in bondage to that snare. Everybody, I want you to stand with me. All week this week, all week this week, we're going to be having prayer. I'm going back. I have to go back to Washington, D.C. But there's going to be prayer all week here. Unless we have a, a meeting like on Wednesday night. I want you to come and I want you to cry out, O oh, Sovereign Lord. Revive again your work in the midst of us as in the days of old. And as you do, I want you to say, Oh God, raise up laborers for the harvest. And then on the heels of that, I want you to say, Raise me up. Raise me up in power. Raise me up in a glory. Raise me up in the anointing that you demand for all of your harvesters to have. See, the Lord said, You cannot represent me until you baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire, until you receive power from on high, I want you to pray, oh God, raise up laborers. And then I want you to say, Lord, raise me up and understand that that is within the dimension of now you functioning and moving and flowing in the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We want, and we want, I'm Hosea. We want to encourage you to the point that you do. David, I'm so excited about what God's doing in you and Heather. I feel it. I see it a mandate. I see an anointing. I see a powerful rushing mighty wind. Saina Mosahara. Ira pokanan jeka yelaman jes tutor no sita ilamaxata exact no look to the might. Now in the name of Jesus, with greater might, with greater power, with greater witness in Jesus. Go everywhere and preach the gospel. Go everywhere. Go everywhere and make known his mighty name. Dear people, I want you to understand, we want to find a way to encourage every one of you. We want to open up the door of opportunity for you to get involved in ministry so that you can begin 
to function in that anointing that God gave you when he put you in this place. This place of being able to walk with him better than Elijah, better than anyone else. Equal to what Jesus walked with him because we find our existence in Jesus. Somebody said, but it's a mighty, boastful thing to say, to walk equal to Jesus. Oh, you must understand, it's because we find our existence in Jesus. You'll never feel bad about yourself again when you find your existence in Jesus. But it is a commitment. Just as the alcoholic's going to say, I'm not going over there to the alcohol. It is a commitment to say, I'm not going over there to the condemnation, the lies, and the threats, and the intimidation. No more. No more will I allow those accusations to work in my mind and my spirit. I won't. Just like the heroin addict. Or anybody else that has other addictions. You decide, not from this day forward, I know who I am. I've taken my place. I find myself in Jesus Christ. To no longer function under the mind of Satan, but to begin to function in the mind of Christ. To no longer live by mental assent, by mental knowledge, but the activation of the Holy Ghost. The Word of God from this day forward in Jesus' name activated in you by the Holy Spirit. The commitment now, the commitment commitment we can go everywhere we can just pray a prayer of faith with anyone on the streets anywhere and say in the name of Jesus Christ you a new creation but there's going to have to be a acknowledgement of the commitment you're gonna to have to find a church we want you to come with us but you're gonna to have to be in a church you're gonna to have to give yourself to the things of the Spirit you're gonna to have to learn the you're gonna to have to learn how to walk with God recognize that you're not just physical you're also spiritual you've got to have people around you to help you do that you want to be a part of the company of the church there is a commitment well even as we say that to people that are lost we say to those who are found you want to move with God there is a commitment you ain't going to do it your own way I'm not going to do it my own way we follow the heavenly vision and we follow the ministry that the Lord has established in the earth Hallelujah. Today, in Jesus' name, I want every person in this place to receive. I want you to take your finances out, and I want you to consecrate them to the Lord. And when you do, I want you to, conse I want you to consecrate yourself to being used by God to seeing Satan's financial kingdom exploited. You listening to me? Somebody go in there and overthrow that kingdom. Well, I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're, not, if you're not taking all that you have right now and serving the master with it, he couldn't entrust you with more. You, do you hear what I'm saying? One day a dear friend of mine said, why haven't we reached into the realm of the financial kingdom yet? I said, because none of us are worthy of it. And, and, and the person has accomplished way more than I have in the kingdom. And he said, what do you mean none of us are worthy of it? I said, well, the Lord said he'd count us worthy to fulfill all of his good pleasure with the work of faith and power. That's what I mean. And if we'd been counted worthy of it, we would have done it. That's what I mean. It already happened. So what do we do? Just give up and sit down and let us go? No, we press in. Okay, well, then we're going to be worthy of it. Huh? Then I'm going to read the scripture and see what I need to do to be worthy of it. Because if we're not faithful a few, he can't give us a few things. He can't give us more. I'm on the challenge you now. Listen to me. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to pray different. I want to challenge you to go to your knees and pray until you feel heaven come upon you. It takes away all the intimidation. It gives you boldness. Just like Ruth Anna was singing, saying, singing, I don't see my brokenness anymore. Sitting at the table, I don't see my brokenness. A lot of people live in their brokenness. They live in their dysfunctionalness. They live in their intimidation, their fear. All other synonyms for being introverted. And they feel awkward when they talk. God wants to break that yoke. Come sit at the table. You begin to pray till boldness comes upon you, till glory comes upon you. Everything changes. Till he fills you with his words rather than your words. Nobody's going to be changed by your words, by my words. They're not going to be changed. Even if I'm quoting scripture up and down, they're going to be changed by the anointing. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke. It's the anointing. 
Somebody said, why, aren't any, why isn't anybody being given their life to the Lord through me? Why can't I bring people into the kingdom? Because you don't have the anointing to break the yoke. You've got to have an anointing to break the yoke. I've seen Baptists get a hold of an anointing, a salvation anointing. They don't even know nothing about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They get a hold of a salvation anointing, and they see hundreds of people come into the kingdom every month. They got a salvation anointing. What do you want from God? He wants to give to you. What do you want from God? He's going to use you. He's going to use you radically because you're, you're not willing to be anything else than that. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing. Be in much prayer for this nation. Be in much prayer for the situation that we find ourselves in this, at this time. Because we fast approaching the days of the coming of the Lord. We fast approaching the day of great conflict. So this nation and other nations stand at the crossroads of blessings and curses. Blessings to walk with the Lord, curses if we de demand to continue on with the ways of iniquity because you, the wages of sin is death. It's that simple. We must have, we must have an awakening in the church. We must have an awakening in this earth. We must see the fires of revival burn in this land again. The fires of revival must burn in our hearts. They, they must burn, 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 they must burn. You're, there's going to have to be people who will give themselves to much prayer. There's going to have to be people who will give themselves to the service of the king for these things to be seen again. The Lord is calling you. You're fit. He made you fit. It ain't about, not, it ain't not, it's not about getting fit. He made you fit instantaneously. It's not about receiving power. It's available right now. He's already given it. It's yours. It's yours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's yours. And as simple as baptize me, Holy Ghost. Don't look to the past at the future. Baptize me, Holy Ghost. Strengthen me. Empower me. I want to pray right now for everybody who wants to be baptized in the fire to reach the lost. If you have a bold witness, I want you to come right now. I'm just, I'm going to pray for all my hands on you. You're going to have boldness to be witness. The Spirit of the Lord is here to fill you. The Spirit of the Lord is here to fill you. Boldness to be witness. Boldness to be witness. Boldness. Bold. Boldness. 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 Bold. Bold. Bold faith. Fire faith. Bold. Bold. Boldness right now. Fire God right here. Fire God right here. Fire God right here. Face the fire God right here. Fire God. Boldness. Bold. 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 Fire God. Messiah and I. Ha <laughs> ha. Fire God. Bold. My. Ha <laughs> Bold! Holy Ghost! Bold! 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 Bold!
Nu sanna ma sai na mosu in a say. Bonus on ya. Sure, Nicole. Right out of your belly flows a boldness of the Holy Ghost. Power from on high. Power. 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 Power from on high. Power. Power. For there. Power from on high. Power. Power from on high. Power. 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 Power from power. Power. Power from power. Power. Power from on high. Power. Power from on high. Power. Power. Power from on high. Zuria Papo. Power. Power from on high. Power from on high. Power. Sutayali Alipas. Yerupaya Dupa. Power. Power from on high. Ha 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 Power from on high. Power from on high. Mama Manaya. Mama Nanaya. Masaya Taya. Maya Nanyana Naya. Power. Power from on high. Power to be witnesses. Power. <laughs> power from on Power from on high. Moses Aya. Iribai is Sikuri Nayasha. Mianan Ha ha. Yeah. Power from on high. Power. Power from on high. Amana say. Amala. Power from on high. Every yoke broken in Jesus' name. Power from on high in Jesus' name. Malaya Porosira. May and Jaya. Power from on high. Power. My name is GK Ashi. Touched by now in Jesus' name. The Lord of the in the mind that I am. The glory and the power from on high right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the anointing right here in this life. Thank you for your glory, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Power from on high. Power from on high. Power from on high in Jesus' name. Power! Come on, hi. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it, Tyler. Power! Power! Come on. Power! Come on, like a <laughs> to be his witnesses. To be witnesses that Christ Jesus raised up from the dead, that Satan is not the one with the power and the authority in this earth, but it's Christ Jesus. Let every one of the things that Satan has done to control and ruin men, to execute his authority in the earth, has been taken back. And as Paul said to the church at Rome, in Romans, God shall bruise Satan under your feet very shortly, very soon, very soon because they were pressing in to walk in that divine authority uh, that has been given to Christ Jesus, which he has given to us, that we begin to lay hold on and we don't let go of until all that God has spoken is realized in our life. Don't stop short. Hallelujah. 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 The smallest amount of faith will result in mountains being moved out of the way, and now we're going to have it. God's going to make sure that you have it. I said God is going to make sure that you have it. I said God is going to make sure that you have it. Ishaya <laughs> Pondai. 
Rapai na musupai, you know. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you that every addiction is broken off of this life. Hallelujah. He's not going to be abused anymore by Satan's lies, but rather filled with the Holy Ghost. Isabaina. Baptized in the Holy Ghost and power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the anointing. You give. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing. Hallelujah. Carry to the table. Carry to the table of the Lord. Hallelujah. Carry to the table in Jesus' name. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. I see nations changed. I see kingdoms subdued. I see the power of God being executed to the lives of those who are willing to believe something about themselves that can only be taught to them by God. These things of divine power and authority, these things of who we really are in Christ Jesus can only be taught to us by God. It can only be revealed to us by the Spirit. Only God can show us these things. See, if it was up to the intellect of men, if it was, if it was just if men could do it by the intellectual realm, then everybody around Peter would have known who Jesus is and been able to execute it with faith. He said, I understand. You are the, you are the son of the living God. Father said, Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. It was a, a realm now, not of mental ascent, not of just knowledge and information, but of the unction and the expression of the Holy Ghost coming out and it was life you see any of them could say you're the son of God they've been it, it was testified to them they all believed that but it was an expression by the Holy Ghost it was an unveiling by the Holy Ghost it was not mental it was not a knowledge realm it was spirit knowledge and by the help and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ every one of you are going to learn how to function in spirit knowledge speak by spirit knowledge hallelujah as one dear brother said, you're going to get out of your head. You're going to get out of your head. So that's what does that mean, get out of your head? It's no longer you speaking, it's but the Spirit of the Father speaking through you. Hallelujah. It's no longer a basis of what you know through your education realm, but something that God has shown you. That's why the reading of the Word is so powerful in the communion with God, because it's the Holy Ghost who begins to unveil it. He begins to unveil it. Unveil it. And as you obey him and as you do and are faithful to do those things which has been unveiled to you, he unveils more. He unveils more. Beautiful. Every one of you in Jesus' name, every single soul in this place, you will find your place before the Father. You will find your position in ministry in Christ Jesus. And you'll never let it go, Nicole. You'll never let it go. Hallelujah. <laughs> I see a great anointing on you. I see a great anointing on you. I see Father pleading with you. And this thing's going to be done. And he told me specifically. He said, lay hands on her. So that she can receive what you have. To be bold. To function in my anointing. Right over there. Part of the reason I called everybody up here. Because I heard straight the Lord say about you. <laughs> it's yours. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. It's yours. These things are yours, Nicole. They're yours. You're going to walk in them. You're going to do them. You're going to be the woman of faith. Hallelujah. Sikan Marostoya. That Christ Jesus has made you to be. Siataya la Mosiah. Harastataniki. <laughs> Mahanadea. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Irosaya. Irosutaina. Ilamosaina. Irosutaina. Out of your belly flows these rivers of the holy. Honey. Out of your belly flows. Baradayana mane yaramano siyanin. 
Out of your belly flows these rivers of the, of the Holy Ghost. Break forth, oh my soul, in the joy. Yeah. Break forth, oh my soul, in the joy. Break forth, oh my soul, in the joy. Ah. Break forth, oh my soul, in the joy. Mama, na, na, na. Here's what the Lord says. No longer look on the things as they appear to you in your own perception and thinking. You've seen things and they're familiar to you and you judge them to be this thing or that thing. No longer look on things with the natural eye. No longer see the hindrances. No longer see the problem. No longer see the obstacles. Uh, but in the Spirit, by the Spirit, begin to speak the word of life and the word of faith and see it changed. See it different. Rejoice you in the Lord your God. Which way the Spirit of the Lord would do through you for He's going to do great wonders to you, Nicole. The doubt and the unbelief that has tried to hold you back will not hold you back. Well, you shall flow in the Holy Ghost. You shall flow in the life power of the Holy Ghost. You shall flow in the realms of the Spirit. You shall, flow, you shall understand what it means to be overwhelmed and taken over by the beautiful presence of the Lord. Moving by His instruction, moving by His impulses. Speaking by His divine inspiration. Huh. Oh, what a glorious realm it is. Moving in His faith. But there's no awkwardness there. There's no doubt there. No uncertainty there. Hallelujah. You and JJ. And it's beautiful how you prophesied over yourselves and named your children faith to move in faith. Judah, to move in praise. Hear God speak to you. Find the connection between the two. Let them be the issues of your life and the fruit of your life. Faith, faith, <laughs> and praise. Hallelujah. Right now, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Mamako kanasa kala. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I praise you, Almighty God. Lord Jesus. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you tired of living under the yoke of the cares of life? Are you tired of being subject to your situation and circumstance, to the problems that surround you, then shake it off of you. Shake it, throw it away from you as a beggar's garment. Now begin to live in the heavenly realm. Begin to sidestep it. <laughs> and lift your heart and your hands and your voice towards heaven. And watch what God will do. Watch what God will do. Watch what God will do. Watch what He will do. He'll change everything that's impossible for man to change. He'll do what's impossible for men to do. Watch what God will do. <laughs> Watch what God will do. Be no longer subject to it. Be no longer subject to it. Do not respond to its influences. Don't respond. Allah <laughs> 
Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the anointing upon Christian. Don't be held back. Don't be held back by anything. Don't be held back. Run! 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 Don't walk. Run! 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 <laughs> Hallelujah! Run! When the prize is in before you, there before you, you don't walk. You run. You run. When the prize is there before you, you don't walk. Amen. Amen. Well, just stay rejoicing all day long. Come back tonight. We'll be here at prayer, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. We're going to have ministry time. I want to just build you up in the faith so that you go do the things that God has commissioned us to do. So that you, for this day forward, everything's changed. You can't be forgetful hearers anymore. Just be under the compulsion and the fire of the Holy Ghost to go do the things that God's commissioned us to go and do. Amen. Somebody might say, well, I've been doing this thing and that thing. Well, I pray in Jesus' name. You won't be satisfied with doing this thing and that thing. Nothing can be the same. You get a bigger vision. Hallelujah. You start doing more in the kingdom. Amen. Somebody said, I want to be a leader. No problem. Just start doing more than anyone else. Or start doing more than others. You automatically be a leader. Amen. Uh, just, you can't, you can't help... You can't help but do that when you're following Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> well, find a bunch of people around you, hug them, tell them that you love them, bless them in Jesus' name. <laughs>